Gather around, gather around. It's time for a story. This is about my first metal show. It was Iron Maiden with Alice Cooper as the opener. The Made in England tour was making a stop in Camden, New Jersey on June 29, 2012. I was 16. I'd been getting serious into metal since Christmas 2009 as a 14-year-old. So for a couple years, I'd been enjoying extreme metal in the likes of Autopsy, Morbid Angel, Origin, Hemorrhage, Napalm Death, Naza, Egg Destroyer. Many of the elite metal giants like Maiden and Priest I didn't start deep diving into until after I was already used to blast beats and intense gore. But this tour was announced and everybody got excited. Made in England was a live video released in the 1980s to promote the Seventh Son of a Seventh Son album. The tour was called Seventh Tour of a Seventh Tour. Seventh Son is an album that divided many fans because of the emphasis on keyboards. But the Made in England tour was a nostalgia tour, kind of like the Somewhere Back in Time tour a few years earlier. The set list was primarily 80s Maiden, and the set designs took after the set seen in the Made in England video. Those who didn't care about anything Maiden did after Seventh Son rejoiced. They didn't have to sit through any long songs from Dance of Death or The Final Frontier. Even people who liked those albums knew that there was magic in classic Maiden that couldn't be recreated. In other words, nobody objected to only old songs being played. Having lived in North Carolina and going to visit my mother in Pennsylvania over the summers, I suggested to her that we go see it. The date for them playing fell during my visit with her. She got physical tickets months in advance, and I had time to prepare. I wanted to be as familiar with the music as possible, and though I'd heard many of these albums before, I wanted to really know them now. Every album was on constant rotation in the months before the show. Coheed and Cambria opened for many dates on the Made in England tour, but Alice Cooper was opening on my run. Though I enjoyed Maiden, I'd only heard a couple of Alice Cooper songs by that point. Being that I was obsessed with death metal and wanted almost nothing to do with anything else at the time, I had a slight objection to seeing Alice. Oh, all he does is sing Schools Out. I don't want to listen to any of that. I want to listen to metal. Little was I so prepared to change my mind so hard. Camden, New Jersey was across the bridge from Philadelphia, nearly two hours away from Lancaster if you account for traffic. So during the show, Bruce and Alice kept screaming out, Philadelphia, and not Camden. But I was excited. The occasion was celebrated with a double gulp of Mountain Dew from 7-Eleven before the show. We got to the parking lot and people were pre-gaming with lawn chairs, beer, and the sounds of metal. I'd walk past a truck full of people and go, hey, that's Anthrax playing. These were my people, all in one place. I could barely find these people living in the Bible Belt. A family member would tell me that the angry video game nerd was going to be at the show, and to be sure to look for him. I was gifted an AVGN shirt for Christmas a year or so beforehand, but I didn't bother to look him up for some reason. It wasn't until some time after the show that I started watching him. At that point, I wished I could have gone back in time and told myself to care and to look for him at the show. The merch for the tour was pretty awesome. Iron Maiden was always well marketed and always had great shirts and collector's items. I left with a 3D Number of the Beast poster. On the doors entering the show, there was a sign saying, Moshing and crowd surfing may take place. Be aware of your surroundings. Moshing, crowd surfing, and entering such areas may be dangerous and is at your own risk. I'd seen moshing on the internet and unfortunately couldn't join the pit without a ticket. But it was fun to watch as we were seated near the pit. Section 100, Row G, Seat 2. It would be 2014 before I got the chance to mosh. Alice Cooper had this big curtain with him on it. Once it was time, the spooky spoken word intro began. It evolved into, These words he speaks are true. We're all human airy stew. If we don't pledge allegiance to the Black Widow. Ba -da 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 -da. The curtain dropped and Black Widow was blasted. Alice first appeared on this raised platform with a ladder, and after a minute it looked like he was getting a little nervous being that high up, but all my preconceptions about Alice Cooper were shattered right then. I enjoyed the rest of the show immensely. He had a banner in front of the drums that said, No More Mr. Nice Guy, but these songs were heavy. Since we were so close to the stage and some of these songs were downtuned, these songs sounded like metal, and they didn't sound like 70s rock. Like, the second song he played was Brutal Planet. I was now an Alice Cooper fan. Absolutely. 
And with Alice, I was just as fascinated by the stage props as I was with the songs. I mean, there was the guillotine, he had the Frankenstein monster running around on stage. And then at the end, of course, he played Schools Out, the song that I objected to so much because I heard it so much on classic rock radio. He played that song and it was fun. He had a lot of fun that night. He even added a little section covering another brick in the wall. I never minded listening to Schools Out ever again. His set was over, and that double gulp ran right through me. So I got in the giant line for the men's room. As I was approaching the urinal, some old jackass behind me got in front of me and went, Stop! And cut in front of me! I was only a minor, but I sure wish he would have done that to me as a legal adult. I should have just pissed on him! Well, now that that one awesome band was finished, it was now time for THE awesome band. The main draw, the big kahuna! The Mighty Maiden, as I kept referring to it, and Antissa... Patient. UFO's Dr. Doctor was playing on the speakers, which I would later learn that Maiden plays for all of their shows. It was getting dark, and then it was time. The album recorded intro to Moonchild started before the band even got on stage. Everyone knew the words and sang along with them. Seven deadly sins, seven ways to win, Seven holy paths to hell and your trip begins. It wasn't until I am he, the boneless one, the fallen angel watching you that we finally got to see the band and Bruce Dickinson appear. For The Prisoner, they had the video clip on the screens of the show The Prisoner, which is where the opening sample from the song came from. Uh, Bruce waved a British flag for the trooper around when they were playing that song and during Run to the Hills, Eddie would come out dressed up as a soldier swinging a sword around. Uh, for Number of the Beast, there was a lot of fire going off in this devil statue with its head moving around. The stage production and set designs had so much going on. They had the backdrops change on many of the songs. Uh, so many different Eddies appeared, and there were giant animatronic figures that moved, including one that took after the Seventh Sun cover. Um, I know people sometimes have extreme opinions of Yannick Gers, but let me tell you something. He was smiling big the entire time during that show. You gotta admire Yannick's enthusiasm. Being summer, of course, it was really hot outside, so the whole band was sweaty and Bruce was throwing sweat around everywhere <laughs> towards the end of the show. After the song Iron Maiden, they left for a minute. Churchill's speech came over the speakers and they finished out the show with Aces High, The Evil That Men Do, and Running Free. The set list was incredible. The overall energy was good spirited. For songs like Fear of the Dark, everybody sang along. Whoa, 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 whoa. We were seated pretty close to the speaker, so sometimes Bruce would talk and it just sounded like. Aah! It didn't occur to either of us to bring earplugs. I wouldn't start wearing earplugs to shows until years later, but we couldn't hear right for days after that. And my right ear got it worse than my left ear. <laughs> I would talk about that show for months to anyone who'd listen. I'd talk about Alice Cooper's Frankenstein monster and Maiden's Eddie running around on the stage. When I heard any Maiden song that summer, I'd think of the backdrops and the things they would do on stage. Alice Cooper became a constant presence on my iPod, and it wouldn't be the last time I'd see either of these bands. Since then, my loyalty was confirmed. Lifelong. Grind on.